for the third video, we have running an integration that we made in the previous video. So if you haven't seen how that is set up, I would recommend you to watch the previous video first. But this is having data flowing from system A to system B, changing a few things to the uh, configurations and then showing how we would look at data and how that would actually work differently with uh, the data itself. So first of all, I think it's very good to explain what kind of data we're looking at and to show what kind of data comes in. So I'm talking for this API endpoint, which has customers in there and it has 10 customers in there. However, within Alumio, we prefer to look at the individual object rather than the full object. But I will zoom a little bit more about that later. So if we want to have information from the route, which is connected by the uh, first system towards the other system, if we want to have that going through the system, it is very simple. We first have to go towards the incoming configuration and we would have to run the incoming configuration. Once we run the incoming configuration, we can see that the, within the loggings, that's what happens to that call. The loggings are offloaded to Elasticsearch and then loaded again from Elasticsearch, which is a specialized database that can handle with a lot of logging. However, there's a slight delay to that then as well. So here we can see that there is a certain request to slash users on the JSON placeholder as host. We can see that we get a certain response, which is the same response of the data that I just showed in the other tab. And if we scroll further down, we can see that a task was created for that. We can also verify that right now, if we go to the dashboard, we can see that we have one new task and that is from the route customers from A to B. We can also verify that from the task overview and within the task overview, we can see previously tasks that were made before and we can see the new task that is made here at the top as well. We can zoom into the information. We can see at which moment it was made. We can also check right now what the data is all looking like we can once again check, okay, what was it when it came in, in what kind of batch did it came in, at what time, and we can also check the export message. However, the export message is, of course, not there yet because we haven't sent the information out yet. To send the information out, we would have to run the route to empty the queue that is for that route. So once I run the route, I, will, I could click on the um, information here to check the logging. However, I can just also simply go over here, and this page actually refreshed automatically which then says like, okay, you posted the full object over there. And then we got a certain response and saying that was okay. So that also means if I go to this page right now, this one, I actually do have to refresh. I will see that I have a finished task, which I can also verify from the task overview that we have a finished task. However, as I mentioned, within Alumio, we would like to look at the individual data object. There are two reasons for that. The individual object has a true identifier. In this case, the true identifier would be, for example, ID one. However, ID one could be something that is also a product one or a customer one, maybe an order one. So therefore we can choose to actually have more than one identifier for that uh, um, data. The reason that we would like to do this is because it's better to have like certain identifiers to also check them within the logging. Also, let's say we would send out all of this information to a bulk API. The bulk API might give a response that something was wrong somewhere and therefore it doesn't give like very specific error logging. It will probably reject the whole batch rather than just rejecting the one object that was wrong. And those are all kind of scenarios which are not really that functional for your integration. What you would like to have is let's say you just look at the individual object. You can see that from the logging, but it can also give you a clear error message of saying like, hey, sorry for this one object, the zip code was wrong for example. And therefore just it's rejecting the first object, but it's not rejecting all of the other objects. So let's actually configure that within the incoming configuration to say like, okay, we want to split up these objects and we actually want to uh, define those identifiers. So to do that for the identifiers, we have to go to the entity schema. So to create an entity schema, we will have to go to settings, entity schema. We can go over here, we can create one. We could say, okay, getting started session, we create that. From here, we can also, um, let's call it schema. From here in the schema, we could also make a full schema of applying like, okay, do we want to validate the data that comes in? For example, saying like, okay, we want to have an ID. The ID has to be an int and we have certain uh, information that comes in as a string, et cetera, et cetera. However, in practical use, we don't see this used too often. And that is mainly for the reason that APIs from um, SaaS products or SaaS platforms are very stable and they don't change their data structure that much. However, would you say you're working with a custom API or you're working with like a custom uh, platform itself, then it might be useful to actually uh, perform that whole schema of checking the data that comes in. However, in this case, the only things that we need are those identifiers 
of saying like, okay, the email and the ID as identifiers which we would see back in the log. We can save this right now. However, if we would run the task once more, we can see that from the, it will check from the top level if it has ID in there or not. But from the top level, it only has these numbers of the objects itself, which we first have to split up. So we can split those up. We can actually first um, apply the schema. But now once we open the schema, we can see the schema that we just created. We can apply that one. And then we also have to apply a transformer to actually split up the data. For this, we will use the prototype entity transformer that is called get branches from a pattern. And with this, we can say we want to have a pattern of a star. So this might be slightly technical, but what this means is that within the data, there is a certain array from the top level and it will loop through each element and it will split off each element. However, would you say like, okay, we start off with an old data object or a value object. That would also mean that it would not be star, but it would be like the old data dot value or something. You would have to go towards the array or the list of where the objects are that you would like to split off. In this case, they're in the root level. So we split them up with star. Once we save this right now, uh, we run the incoming configuration once more. We can actually see that we can go once more to the logging. We get the same response of the 10 different objects. However, instead of creating one task right now, it's creating multiple tasks. We can also once more verify that from the dashboard that we have 10 tasks right now rather than having one task. We can also verify that from the task overview, seeing that we have the tasks, including the schema and the identifiers, which we've mentioned before which also means right now that if we go to the entity data, we can see the individual data that is um, shown for that individual object. Once again, again, we can see the import message where did it came in and the export message, once we would run it out, if I would click on the run button right now to send out all of that information. You can also see that it took slightly longer than running it the first time because now we're sending like 10 individual tasks out rather than sending one task out which takes slightly longer, but therefore the manageability is a lot better than sending out things towards like a bulk API, for example. So currently we pulled information in, we split that up, we applied identifiers and we sent that out. However, something we didn't do yet is that we applied a scheduler because currently I'm pushing buttons to pull information in and to send information out. Of course, in a real environment, that's not something you would like to do. So therefore you would have a scheduler. So to go to a scheduler, we can create a scheduler we could give it a name and we can apply the scheduler on two different parts. So the first one would be to have on the incoming configuration. So that's to pull information in. Let's say we put it on the uh, incoming configuration that we just made, and then we can apply a cron expression. Would you say that you're not familiar with the cron expression? We actually applied a cron tab over here, which gives like an extra, a written out explanation of what cron would be. So for example, cron is your time pick in how often you would like to do it. For example, you would like to have this income configuration run every minute, it would look like this. Let's say you would like to run it every 15 minutes, it would look something like this. So this would run at 15, at 30, 45, and then again at 60. Would you say like, okay, we only want to do it overnight between three and seven. You could say we would like to do it like every five minutes between three and seven. With this, you can get very creative of saying like, okay, when do we want to run it? How do we want to run it? And when do we want Alumio to pull for information? Going back towards the scheduler, we can apply the similar uh, step for the outgoing configuration. So that's emptying the queue. So that is the outgoing configuration of a route. So we can say like, okay, we have these customers A to B. Only, only this one is slightly smarter because it knows how many tasks it has in the system. So we could say like, for example, we want to send out 50 tasks every one minute or for example, every five minutes. This also means, let's say that uh, we are trying to send out 50 tasks every five minutes, but it can only uh, send out 30 tasks in five minutes. That would mean that the next uh, tick of five minutes, it will not try to send out another 50. It will actually wait until the previous 50 are fully done. And then the next moment hits and then it will actually go through it. So it will skip the minute 10 in this example. So that's where you can also look at like, okay, within the login, how long is my request taking? Maybe I would have to downscale this slightly a little bit or maybe upscale this a little bit. And that's where you can play around with like how the integration is working and how the data flow works that way. So this video gave a brief introduction of gave, uh, pulling in information, sending information out, running the routes, running them automatically, 
And within the next video, we will go into the step of applying transformers because we pulled information in, we split that up, we sent that elsewhere. However, we didn't do anything with the information yet, which of course is needed if you would actually like to send it to system B. Thank you.